Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Matthew Gold, and this is Talajan, and we are thrilled to be here with you this evening, if virtually, uh, presenting a program of solo works for percussion. Uh, this is an evening of mostly short, mostly recent solo works played by members of the group. Um, and yeah, you know, we're very much looking forward to connecting with you live again in the near future, but we are thrilled to be able to be here in this capacity again. Um, a few words about the first work on the program, Grasshopper Trance for Solo Marimba by Ileana Perez Velasquez, uh, a good friend and colleague of mine. Um, this is the first movement of a two movement solo marimba work that I will be premiering uh, pretty soon. Um, and yeah, um, you know, you'll hear in an intro that she'll give in a moment uh, via video um, more about the piece, but it comes from a place of hope and yeah, I think that's a really good place to be right now. So I will turn it over to uh, Ileana for a moment. Hello everyone, this is Ileana Perez Velasquez, composer. I invite you to listen to the premiere of my composition, Grasshopper Trance by amazing percussionist, Matt Gold. I wrote this piece at the end of uh, January of, 19, of 2021, this year, uh, as a way of a celebration for, I, for I, what I have been predicting as a better world for all of us, with social justice and no COVID, a better world where we are all happy. So enjoy the music. Yeah, Matt. Sounds great. Good Play, job, Matt. Playing into the emptiness of the internet. But I like the hopeful, the hopeful grasshopper jumps. Um, 
The next piece we're going to play, uh, or I'm going to play, is a, a piece by a composer, a student at Queens College, who wrote the piece for me a couple of weeks ago for a concert she was doing. Uh, the name of the piece is The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and the composer is with us, Josephine Rose. This might be unpurposefully a, a reaction piece to the first piece. I'm wondering, <laughs> Josie, how you doing, Josie? I'm great. Thank you so much for choosing to play my piece. I was so excited um, when you said you were going to play it on this concert. It's I'm, I'm just so over the moon about it, um, and I really appreciate it. Um, and I, it was really inspired by your solo album, actually, um, which is called So Long Thanks, and everybody should go listen to it because it's so cool. Oh. It In preparing for this project, it like opened up my mind as to what a solo percussion piece can really be. Um, especially uh, Nick's Kin by, I think it's Dave, Dave Cawson, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Dave's and he's actually guy. here uh, at yeah. this concert. Um, but the the text I chose uh, to go with the, the djembe is from the book of Revelation. It's the uh, vision that St. John has about the end of the world. And it's it's really prophetic and mystical. And if, if you want to be confused for 15 minutes, go read the book of Revelation. It's a trip. Yeah. Um, so I, I really had a fantastic time working on this project. And I, I really enjoyed it. And I hope you all do too. Well, so did I. Thanks, Josie. <clears throat> and just a quick, uh, you can hear me, Freddie? Somebody? We got gotcha. you. Okay, thank you.
and broke open the poor seal. And I heard the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there was a pale colored horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades followed close behind. They were given authority over one fourth of the earth to kill by means of war, famine, disease, and wild animals. Woo! Sounded great. All right. Thanks, Josie. Good job, Josie. Great job. Thank you so much for writing the piece. All right. Thanks, Michael. I uh, hope everybody can hear me okay. Uh, I am broadcasting live from the Manhattan School of Music because um, I do not have a vibraphone at home. And Kate Linus just saw you give the the MSM gang signs, that was great. Um, so uh, the piece I'm gonna play is called Lucas Observed, and it's by Amy Williams. Amy Williams is a uh, longtime friend of the group, and of course, for those of you that are percussion fans, you know that she is uh, part of the percussion royalty that is Jan Williams. So I think we met Amy about 10 years ago, or I met Amy about 10 years ago up in Vermont. We were doing, or sorry, New Hampshire. We were doing a residency up there and she wrote this really amazing percussion quartet um, that we have played a bunch of times since. And every chance I get to perform it with students that we do, because it's just a really well-written piece. And obviously, obviously, she has a great grasp of the instrument. Uh, this piece is for solo vibraphone. It's quite short, but it's uh, packed full of notes. And the Lucas that is referenced in the piece is Lucas Foss. And uh, Amy wrote to me and said that she's uh, always been a big fan of Lucas Foss's music and in particular a piece of his called Solo for piano. And um, so she references a bit of that in this as well as um, some Bach and I guess uh, Lucas Foss was a, a big fan of playing Bach's music. So I'm gonna stop uh, talking and play a little music for you. I also, if you uh, look closely, I have one of my favorite pictures from my office which, which is a picture of um, Jan Williams and Ray DeRoche and myself. Uh, so hopefully that'll, the energy from that Painting will give me a good performance tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Observed by Amy Williams. Thank you. 
Woohoo! Sounds great. All right. Good job, Matt. Nice job. Hey everybody, this is me coming to you pre-recorded from my office at University at Buffalo and I'm going to be playing Morton Feldman's 1964 composition, The King of Denmark. I'll be masked because I do have a, a small live audience here. Um, I'm going to read you a little program note from the late great Max Newhouse for whom this piece was written. The piece was written for me to premiere at the New York Avant-Garde Festival in the fall of 1964. Feldman and I had several meetings at my studio on East 10th Street over the previous summer. He wanted to hear my instruments and explore techniques. With Morty at this time, it was always about finding ways to play more softly. In the second or third session, he was still insisting, no, no, it's too loud, too loud. I suddenly remembered how, as percussion students, we used to practice our parts on stage just before a concert started. In order that the audience not hear us, we used our fingers instead of sticks. I put my, my sticks down and started to play with just my fingers. Morty was dumbstruck. That's it, that's it, he yelled. This work is played throughout only with fingers. Like most of Feldman's music, it is extremely soft and without attacks. The score specifies the relative pitch of each note, high, medium, or low, its relative time, and in some cases, the specific instruments. Much of Feldman's music, because it is so soft, has the effect of putting a magnifying glass onto that area of dynamic between pianissimo and piano. We find all sorts of things we never saw before. Thank you. 
Excellent. Congrats, Tom, but you can't hear me. That was that was wild, uh, seeing the sound and video off a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I enjoyed that. Did you ever hear Max play the piece? I'm curious. No. I heard Jan play it a bunch of times, but I never heard Max do it. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Caitlin, I don't think we can hear you. Oh, you can't hear me. Now yeah, now Wait, now we can. Now we can. Oh, hello? Just check, check, check. Ah. Got it. Hi, Got it Caitlin. now? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll speak into the mic over here. So, my name's Caitlin. I'm going to be playing uh, Play Nice, uh, which is a composition by Eve Baglarian. One of the things that I... Uh, that got me interested in this piece is how Eve describes the instrumentation. Uh, it was originally written for harp, but she says in her front matter, uh, I think it could work well on toy piano or perhaps on vibes as well, or any inherently 
pretty instrument that can get nasty when you hit it too hard. And that got me thinking about pretty sounds versus ugly sounds and how we, how we decide uh, what is what. And that also got me thinking about gender and sound. And I was reminded of another piece by Eve Baglarian called Play Like a Girl, which is also for keyboards. And um, as a woman in the music world and a woman everywhere, um, I'm often asked to play nice and, uh, and make pretty sounds. But um, as with this piece and the vibraphone, um, and in reality, uh, the, the truth is a lot more complicated than that, as you will see. So this is Eve Baglarian's Play Nice.
Yeah, it's great. All right. Awesome. Good job, Caitlin. All right, next up we've got uh, Psalm 3 by Sarah Hennies. Um, this piece, Psalm 3, is, is written for solo woodblock. And uh, my attraction to the piece, and I think Sarah's inspiration to write it, both stem from the same piece, which is um, Alvin Lussier's Silver Streetcar for the Orchestra. Uh, in the Lussier piece, he asks the performer to explore various sonic um, behaviors of a solo triangle. And uh, Sarah noticed that this kind of sonic exploration through minuscule and subtle changes in location, dampening, could really be applied to any percussion instrument. And so she wrote a series of three psalms, Psalm 1 for vibraphone, Psalm 2 for snare drum, and Psalm 3 for woodblock. Um, in an acoustic environment, this piece would, would really saturate the space. Um, so for our Zoom, Zoom universe, I've kind of, um, I've got a bunch of um, resonance taken from a upright piano over in the corner with its pedal down, my microphone's in there. And uh, I'll get an overhead camera view to give you a kind of performer's uh, vantage point. So bear with me for two seconds while I change a bunch of settings, but uh, here's Psalm 3 by Sarah Hennies.
Oh, that's great, Ian. That was kind of freaky. <laughs> <laughs> and it goes in my face. <laughs> I'll yeah. change that. <laughs> um, there we go. So this is the uh, the last piece of, uh, of the program. Um, I'm going to be performing a, um, a drum set solo by by John Hollenbeck um, called Persuasion. I've, I've known John for quite some time now, uh, mostly because he is, uh, well, he's just a very interesting uh, drummer and percussionist and composer. And I was happy to uh, get a piece from him. Uh, I mostly know John as the percussionist for Meredith Monk. And I've had the pleasure and challenge of being uh, the sub for, for, for John on many of uh, Meredith's uh, different pieces. Uh, so I've um, had the pleasure of um, kind of seeing his creativity uh, many, many times. I, I asked John to make a short little video uh, to introduce the piece. And this will be uh, Persuasion by John Hollenbeck. Hi, I'm John Hollenbeck, drummer composer, and I recently wrote a drum set solo piece for David Cosson for the uh, last Bang in a Can marathon. And uh, this piece is kind of goes against uh, David's uh, personality. It's about uh, someone who's kind of very talkative, very pushy, trying to persuade you so they don't give you very much uh, space. Um, and the piece kind of starts out with this kind of insistent phrase and ends with the same phrase. In between that, it kind of morphs uh, into these different grooves. Again, not giving you really a chance to, to, <laughs> to know what's going on, just kind of keep pushing away. So it ends up being kind of a perpetual uh, motion type of piece. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.
Thanks, David. Sounds good. It must be great to have like a drum, a great drum set player write you a great solo. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what, yeah. a cool, what a cool thought. <clears throat> nice. Good job, everybody. That was really, uh, that was fun. I'm glad we did this, actually. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> totally. <laughs> we were talking before that, that, you know, as we come to the next season, we can actually get back to like live playing and playing concerts again. So that would be nice too, I think. But this was fun. I had fun working with the composer. So. <clears throat> Boy, David, how, how many times did you have to play that lick over and over again to get it in your hands? <laughs> that oh, you like yeah. The lick of it. <laughs> it's a, yes, it's, it's a challenging piece. It, I, <clears throat> I had to get away from the, I had to get away from the music and the metronome because it was, uh, it was never going to get fast enough. So, uh, right. Um, but it's something that John does with, uh, like through his improvisations and then he wrote it out. So uh, it would have been fun to be in a room with him and just checking out how he does things. But uh, but but I, but I like the piece. Yeah, it's nice to get a drum set solo. And I don't know if you heard when I came around that is, it's nice to have like a good drum set player write a good drum set solo. You know what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> oh yeah, that's kind of cool. And Caitlin, what a great job. Thanks for thanks for joining us today. This is great. Yeah. I was curious yeah. about that other piece, actually. Is the other piece, um, I don't know either of those pieces. You said the other piece is another mallet piece that Eve wrote? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I, I believe it's for uh, uh, mallet percussion and or uh, like uh, keyboards, any keyboard instruments. Oh, wow. uh, it's 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 very it's beautiful it's it's very it's similar to this in some ways but um yeah it's called play like a girl so <laughs> i assume you don't have to be a girl to play it though oh uh, i i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so good cool great job everybody yeah thank you everybody thanks, and thanks to the audience for joining us yeah, and we you. really hope to see you soon yeah and in person you, hopefully man. Yes. See you next season live at a concert hall near you. That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Adios. It was All right. fun as usual. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye.